made a good choice. Um, we have three short papers for you in this session. Um, there'll be 15 minutes presentation and five minutes uh, questions for each paper. Um, we are being streamed in here, um, which I think uh, was already mentioned at the start of the day. Um, and remember that we do have the VVOX app um, for any discussions and presentations that are happening in this room. So if at any point you want to make a comment or post a question, um, please do so, and we'll try and pick those up um, when we get to the questions for each of the sessions. So, without any further delay, I'm pleased to welcome uh, Yishan Se. I think, hopefully I've just about got that right. Um, and you're going to be talking about working towards a systematic adoption of learning analytics on behalf of yourself and quite a number of colleagues as well. So, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm from the School of Informatics at the University of Edinburgh. Um, it's the prettiest the hall I've ever presented my work at, and so I hope you enjoy the next hour being here, even if you don't do my talk, but hopefully you will. Um, so this talk uh, is about stakeholder expectations and concerns regarding the use of learning analytics in higher education, um, and it's based on the output of a, a large-scale European project called SHILA, uh, which stands for Supporting Higher Education to Integrate Learning Analytics. Um, so, as the name suggests, the goal of this project is to help higher education institutions to adopt the learning analytics effectively, systematically, um, and responsibly. Um, so, I'm presenting this work on, uh, on behalf of this whole team, and I would just like to acknowledge the great inputs to this work. Um, so, this project is made of six different partners in Europe. So, what is learning analytics? Learning analytics is about collecting, analyzing, and reporting um, data about our learners who uh, constantly interact with, uh, with, uh, with, with technology as they learn today, um, and they uh, have been producing a massive amount of data constantly um, at every minute when I'm talking now, a um, massive amount of data is being generated. Um, so we could make use of this data, we could integrate it with um, various um, sources of data such as student characteristics and then generate some insights which could help us uh, make uh, better um, data informed decisions. Um, so it, it could be um, useful for students to uh, adjust their learning, um, uh, learning strategies and for teachers as well to adjust their um, learning design, their course design, and uh, for managers as well um, to better um, allocate resources. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about um, learning analytics, perhaps in three minutes, I would like to shamelessly advertise this uh, short video I made. Um, it's called Learning Analytics in a Nutshell. You'll be able to find it on YouTube. Okay, so to be able to understand uh, what different groups of uh, stakeholders think about learning analytics, and we have adopted mix and methods. We spoke to uh, various groups of stakeholders using um, a number of methods. We have carried out a survey, uh, focus groups, interviews, and group concept mapping. Um, and I would like to focus on uh, just managers, teachers, and students in terms of their expectations and concerns regarding learning analytics. So expectations. From our institutional survey, uh, we found that um, at one of the multiple choice questions where we asked them to tell us about their motivations to use learning analytics, uh, we found that um, the top motivations here uh, the top five ones are to improve student learning performance, to improve teaching excellence, to improve student satisfaction, improve student retention, and to explore what learning analytics can do for the institution, for the teachers, and for students. So we could see that the top four items here are very familiar um, key performance indicators for institutions. And we could also see that from the, the fifth item here that at the time of the interview, uh, sorry, um, of the survey, uh, which was towards the end of 2016, um, learning analytics was still fairly uh, a new idea to many institutions. So they were still just exploring this idea, trying to figure out uh, in what way they could benefit from learning analytics. 
For teachers, we have observed the three areas of interest. Um, at the student level, uh, we found that teachers were particularly interested in using learning analytics to help students develop their self-regulated learning skills um, and also um, to give them better access to their own um, learning progress so that students would be able to make better learning decisions. They won't uh, unnecessarily over anxious or over optimistic about their um, progress. And at teachers level, um, teachers were quite interested in using their analytics to identify students' weakness by providing uh, support to them. They would also like to know how students are engaging with the learning contents that they have prepared and so as to identify the needs to adjust the course design and materials that they have prepared for students. Um, and at the program level, especially for teachers who were responsible for um, managing pro academic programs, they were particularly interested in um, getting an overview uh, about how well the program is doing and in what way they can better uh, improve the overall quality of the educational provision. As for students, uh, we observed four areas of interest, personalized support, better feedback, and better navigation of academic resources and also opportunities for self-regulated learning. So here are just the two uh, quotes as examples to illustrate uh, what they meant by personalized support. So the first student was talking about uh, widening access that universities are all striving for, but yet students themselves don't feel that the univers universities have uh, really done well in terms of providing the same kind of access at the course level. Um, so in, so make, making sure that every student is on the same page, nobody is being left behind. And the second quote uh, provides a very good example of what they meant by somebody being left behind uh, because the teacher uh, didn't know that the, the student hasn't learned to use microscope uh, and yet they just started uh, working on microscope. And this quote uh, regarding feedback um, uh, was, came from a student who was uh, uh, in the first year um, at the university. And he was saying that, oh, the big change uh, between tertiary education and tertiary education is that the contact with uh, teachers have become much less. So they would really appreciate it if um, learning analytics could um, allow them to get, get more feedback about where they are and um, where they should be improving on. Um, in terms of resource access, uh, we particularly hear from students who have learning difficulties and uh, learning disabilities that uh, just wading through the information about various supports available at the university itself is a very, very challenging task. So if learning analytics could um, provide them more targeted uh, recommendations about these uh, support available, then they, they would uh, really appreciate that. Uh, from our survey with students, uh, uh, which got rolled out to uh, six institutions and reached about 3,000 students, we also found that um, among the items related to the expectations of learning analytics services, um, the top three uh, items are all related to self-regulated learning. Um, so in this survey, we asked the students to, to rank their um, ideal expectations and the predicted expectations for various items. Um, the ideal expectation is regarding what they expect to see ideally, what they would like to see, whereas predicted expectations are what they what they expect to see in reality. And we could see that for both scales, um, the top three items are about receiving complete profile of their learning, uh, making their own decisions based on analytics results and knowing how their progress uh, compares to a set learning goal. But we also noticed that among all the samples that we have received, we have got, um, the Open University in the Netherlands um, did not really uh, give very high uh, score to this item about receiving complete profile about their learning. Um, so this is an interesting one. Uh, we do not know why, but what we do know is that the average age of this uh, student population is much older because the stu uh, students at Open University uh, tend to be professionals. They are already working, um, so they are more mature students. Um, so it could be that uh, to them, um, they, they, they tend to have a, a better awareness of um, where they are regarding their um, own progress 
and perhaps because of that, they don't think they need these constant updates. Um, but what we do know, especially what, what is important about this finding is that um, the implementation of learning analytics um, can never be one size fits all and that students in different contexts do have different needs. What about concerns about learning analytics? Well, among senior managers, we have observed the four areas of concerns, including returns on investment, whether the investment is worth, worthwhile or not, and resources, whether institutions have enough resources to drive um, the use of learning analytics, including the financial resource, technological infrastructure, and enough people who could uh, work on learning analytics. And also whether the university has this data culture, whether people are um, willing to, to use data um, to make decisions based on data. And finally, whether there are enough skills to drive learning analytics. So here's just a quote uh, illustrating uh, this manager's concern and uncertainty about whether learning analytics can really do them any good or bring any changes at all. As for teachers, um, concerns are around three areas, students, teachers, and learning analytics. And I will just highlight teachers and learning analytics as I will also be talking about student-related concerns later. So the top concerns that teachers have about, about themselves or uh, Number one, workload. And number two, uh, potential judgment on their teaching performance that learning analysis is being used as a managerial tool. Um, as for learning analytics uh, related concerns, um, teachers have uh, reasonable skepticism about whether, um, to what extent, learning analytics can capture the differences among individual learners. And also the fact that learning is quite difficult to observe and difficult to define um, in different disciplines and the way we collect, we analyze data could all affect our interpretation of learning. So to what extent learning analysis can present us a, a faithful picture of learning is a question that teachers asked. So here's just another quote that teacher uh, was talking about not wanting learning analytics to to, to make students perform in a way that satisfy algorithms. Okay, um, as for students, their concerns um, are also, um, there are a few areas of concerns, um, including the shared concerns uh, about to what extent learning analytics can uh, give them a precise picture of learning. Um, but the, really the, the, the primary concerns among students are related to privacy and ethics. Um, and I would like to talk particularly about access and anonymity because uh, purpose and security are more about the expectations of what the institutions should do. So three themes came up um, around uh, from our conversations with students uh, when they talk about access and anonymity. The first one is the fear of surveillance. I think we have all heard earlier from the keynote um, this negative feeling about being watched. And also there's a fear of being labeled which uh, leads to stereotypes and then um, unfair treatment and marking. And finally, uh, there is a very strong distrust in third parties, um, especially when talking about universities sharing their data uh, with external parties. And this is due to um, the, the fact that students do not know what, what would happen once data travels out. And also there's a fear of becoming uh, the target of commercial um, emails, spam emails. So what we have seen is that um, there are very different priorities and concerns among these three key stakeholder groups. Um, so what we have been able to do is uh, that we have developed a framework that we call SHILA framework, uh, which is based on the, the data that we have collected from direct engagement with 89 institutions across 26 European countries. Uh, we have developed a very comprehensive um, set of um, key action points related to learning analytics adoption and some primary um, challenges that institutions are facing today and also different stakeholders are facing today. And also a list of questions that uh, we encourage policymakers to answer when they are developing um, strategy or policy for learning analytics. Um, and we, we try to take them uh, to step by step uh, to consider six key dimensions to really use a very holistic approach to learning analytics. So I'm gonna just give you some examples here from 
uh, this long list of um, statements that we have created in the framework. So, um, so for example, in terms of uh, mapping political context, we ask um, uh, decision makers to consider what are the reasons for adopting learning analytics. Um, in terms of the dimension of identify key stakeholders, we ask, oh, will there be um, mecha mecha sorry, uh, mechanisms to address in, um, inequality? Um, and moving on to identifying desired changes, we ask how will the purpose of learning analytics be communicated? Um, in terms of strategy, how will the results of learning analytics be interpreted within the context? Moving on to uh, internal capacity, how, what, what training will be provided um, to scale up uh, data literacy? Um, and in terms of monitoring, uh, what are the limitations of learning analytics? What can learning analytics can do and what can they not do? Um, so this is just to show you how they all connected to each other and that this is an iterative cycle. Um, so just quickly show you that we have developed a web tool based on this framework and this is an interface. Uh, it's also openly accessible. Uh, you can move the, move, uh, drop the statements and put in your own statements and also label them by uh, the relevance to different stakeholders and thereby create your own uh, policy framework. So that's the key output of um, this project. I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of minutes for questions. Um, can I first of all check if there are any in the audience? We have one at the back there on the left hand side. If you could uh, keep your hand up, just so our colleagues can find you with the mic. Thank you. And if you can just uh, introduce yourself and say who you are, and then your question, that would be great. Hi, my name is Richard de Blackair Clarkson from the University of Leeds. Uh, we're just sort of getting started in uh, learning analytics systems. This is really interesting. I had a question about the idea of conflict um, between different stakeholders, because it seems like perhaps it's not as big a problem as some people might fear, but there's going to be conflicts of interest. Um, so in particular, things like student privacy um, with regards to having a system that delivers sort of useful data. Do you have a, a general approach to resolving that kind of thing? So I'm thinking about examples where a student says, OK, I understand you need to track my attendance, my grades, and so on, but I don't want you to have anything to do with my physical location or gender, for example. Um, or is it something that would have to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis? Um, so in general, we, um, we are trying to encourage a dialogic approach to adopting learning analytics, which is uh, to bring different stakeholders together to, to talk about um, how they would like to use learning analytics and really to find a balance. Um, and I hear your question, which is, um, I don't think I have an absolute answer to that because that really depends on context. And I think at the end of the day, it's uh, down to this balance that we can, uh, we, we, we can reach within our own context. So in what way, um, so for example, perhaps could we offer um, opt-in and opt-out options for, for certain uses of data or collections of data, and particularly when it comes down to interventions, and this is also GISC, uh, GISC, what JISC has been uh, encouraging people to do as well, that uh, we may not necessarily need consent uh, to collect certain types of data when it is for legitimate uh, purposes and of public interest. However, when it comes to interventions, um, it is quite crucial that we do have students' consent. Yeah, so I think that would be a principle there. Great. Thank you very much. Um, we're just on time, so um, what I'll ask everyone to do is um, give uh, Yishan another round of applause, please. And um, there were another couple of questions that were kind of similar up on the up on the wall.
Edina's work with learning technologists helps to develop skilled, data literate students who can change our world for the better. Teachers and students can develop and share coding skills with Notable, our Jupyter Notebook service. Our Digimap services deliver high quality mapping data for all stages of education. Future developments include a text and data mining service, working with satellite data and machine learning, and smart campus technology.